Hello everybody, this is Doug and I am here in Mongolia once again. However, in this video, we are leaving Ulaanbaatar, the capital city, and we are heading out into the countryside. So we just set off about an hour ago and our destination is called Gorki Terelj National Park. Now Mongolia is totally filled with national parks, but this one is the closest major one to the city. Unfortunately, I have such a short time here that I can't go too far from the capital, but I'm planning to come back again and explore this country even more because it really needs a lot Lot more time. Mongolia is the 18th largest country in the world, but it is the least densely populated country in the entire world. So that basically results in a ton of open space, open countryside, including the green rolling hills that you see here, as well as the flat steppe. So there is just so much to see here, and uh, we're just going to be getting a taste in this video. But I'm setting off for an overnight trip into the countryside. We're going to be staying in Terelj National Park, and we're hopefully going to be sleeping in a Ger, which is a Mongolian yurt. It's gonna be very cool, my first time doing that. And towards the end of this video, we're gonna be stopping off at the Chinggis Khan horseback statue, which is apparently the largest statue of anyone riding a horse in the world. So stay tuned, it's going to be incredible. Can you dribble? Ooh, hey oh. <laughs> you guys live here? Ah, okay. <laughs> you, sp you speak English very well. <laughs> Thank you. What are your names? Uh, my name is Tavan. Tavan? I'm Tavan. Tavan is my name. And I'm from What is it? Ishiklan. Very nice name. And what's your what's his name? What's your name? Uh, Hangat. Uh, Hangat. <laughs> Very nice. And and tell me your name again. Tell me your name. Your name. Name. What is your name? Ah, Achita. Achita. Ah, Eaten. Ah, Eaten. Ah. Ah. Mongolian for me, so tricky. <laughs> yes. You'll be on it. You want to say hi? Say hi to the world. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Hi guys. Sembenu. Sembenu or Senu, because you guys are younger than me. <laughs> In Mongolia, there are two ways to say hello. There's Senbenu, which is like for someone who's older than you. It's like a respectful way. And then Senu is like the more casual way for the youngins. <laughs> All right. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye. Bye <laughs> See ya! So we just stopped off here for a little while, flew the drone a bit, met those nice kids, and now I think we're continuing on. Alrighty guys, so after a brief drive we have arrived where we will be camping for the night. We are going to be staying in this gare. We're just getting settled in. We are in the middle of a giant bowl between all these mountains around us and it is absolutely beautiful. There's a family here that runs this lodging as their family business and I believe they also earn some money from the livestock that they're raising. So they've got some horses, some cows, maybe some other stuff. This is the shit of I'm a cow. cow. <laughs> yeah, it's crying and you know. Okay, yeah. I don't think this was good. So we just went in, dropped our stuff in our gear, and the man, our host here, got the fire started. And now for the rest of the day, we basically just get to relax, fly the drone, get some beautiful shots of this landscape, and just, just relax. Because after the day I had yesterday with my little trip to the hospital, if you don't know about that story, you can watch my visit to the Mongolian black market video, where I explain it at the beginning of the video. But after all of that, I'm quite ready. <laughs> for some nature, some peace and quiet and relaxation time. So I couldn't be happier to be here right now.
Okay, here's our cribs tour of our gear. So we've got four beds here around the gear. This I think is going to be mine. It's firm, but I don't mind. It's gonna be nice and cozy. In here, in the center of the gear, you've got the stove, which is where the cow dung is currently burning, keeping us very, very warm in here. It's really nice, actually. We just boiled some water for coffee just on top of the wood-burning stove here. At the top, you've got the chimney from the stove going up, and then you've got open light coming in. And I think you can actually open, make this completely open air if you want. And then they've also got like this wool thing that can fold over it. So, you know, customizable. And yeah, this is it. It'll be interesting to see how the night in the gear goes. We have a very little door. I have to squat down. Okay. So, speaking of the gear, Mongolia has one of the last true nomadic cultures in the entire world. And that is really where this style of living originates. The Mongols are nomadic people and they're mainly throughout history raising livestock throughout the vast landscape here. And so this is the type of house that they would set up semi-temporary housing out there in, in, you know, the countryside. Of course, these ones stay here because they are for people like us coming to visit. But that is where this style of home comes from. And a lot of people in Mongolia still live like this to this day. It's absolutely amazing. This is my friend and guide, Ank. Hello, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, man, for taking us out mm -hmm. here. He is a tour guide in Mongolia, and he's the one who made all of this happen. So I'm going to drop his contact information in the description below. You get in touch with Ank, he will take care of you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. <laughs> all right, so we're heading off now to uh, a different camp. So we're gonna go eat some dinner, and then the adventure continues. Okay, guys, so we have come to another gear in the camp, and we've gotten the food here. What's the name of the food again? Chuban. Chuban. Yeah. Mongolian handmade noodles. It looks so good. And this is Ghana. Hello. Hi, Ghana. <laughs> she is accompanying us on our trip. But you're intermittent fasting, right? Yep. Yeah, I feel bad eating in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, we're gonna dig in. This looks so good. Good stuff. Is it with lamb or beef? It's beef. Mm. Mm. So, and it's, it's cheers means the best, the best, the friends, you know. Ah, that's so nice. So we're back at the gear and we're having some, some vodka before bed. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, thank you. Todri. Todri. <laughs> Ah, good stuff. Where is this from? From Mongolia. Mongolian vodka. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. Oh, okay. Bye, Vlad. <laughs> There's a bug. <laughs> Alright guys. <laughs> I am headed off to bed in the gear. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Okay, good morning guys. I slept quite well in the gear and we've come just up the hill a little ways to a fresh stream, which I'm currently straddling. It comes straight from underground, and the water is so fresh and so cold. Ooh, it'll wake you up right away. It's very nice. So, today we are continuing the adventure out in the countryside here in Mongolia. I'm so excited. Okay, so we're having Mongolian breakfast. What's the name for this? Urum? Mongolian name is Urum. Urum. 
It's like the fat from milk yep. on some bread. And we have milk tea here too. Milk from the cows, yeah? Mm. Wow. It's like butter almost. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so we have left our Ger camp and now we are at a monastery, yeah? Temple, meditation temple. Meditation temple, okay, not a monastery. Name is Aryaval. Aryaval. Yes, sir. Okay, and it's built right into the side of the mountain. So beautiful, surrounded by mountains and trees. It's a beautiful day here, and there's some paintings up on the rock too. Try to get a closer look at that. Tibetan letters. The Tibetan letters. Yeah. Ah. So it's like a prayer or something? Yeah, pray. Wow. All right, so we're gonna head up there and we'll take a look. So during the communist times, like in, you know, the 20th century, Stalin and his buddies controlling Mongolia really heavily persecuted any kind of religion, including Buddhism. So they killed a lot of the monks and intellectuals and they had to flee out into the countryside in places like this to practice Buddhism in secret. That's how a lot of these places came to be. So here written on some of the statues, you've got the old Mongolian text. Now they use the Cyrillic, like Russian, but this is the old Mongolian script and it was written vertically. Do you read top to bottom? Yep. Wow, so cool. Okay, we've got a bridge here, a wooden hanging bridge. Here we go. Oh, very bouncy. <laughs> I think these guys are enjoying bouncing it. You can see right through. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jeez, it's very shaky. Back and forth. And we made it. Almost there. So up here they've got the nice pictures on the top and then the hellish pictures on the underside. It's a warning of what will happen if you don't behave in this life. Yikes. And here it is inside. So colorful. Beautiful. Headed down. All right, guys. And for the last part of this adventure out into the Mongolian countryside, we have come to the largest equestrian statue in the world. This is the statue of Chinggis Khan. He is, of course, the most famous Mongolian who has ever lived. You know, it's interesting because in the West, I think Chinggis Khan has this reputation of being kind of this brutal, violent warlord who just kind of pillaged, fought his way across Eurasia and caused a lot of harm and violence. But he's still very much revered here in Mongolia as kind of the father of the nation and, and, a, and a national hero and kind of a source of very much pride for the Mongolian people. So. He's on all the currency and in the main square and of course right here. This statue is over a hundred feet tall and I believe it was built in 2008 and it's facing east towards where Chinggis Khan was born. So you guys can probably see some people on the top of the horse's head. You can actually go inside the statue and take an elevator up and uh, go inside the statue to the top of the horse's head. There's apparently also a big museum in there, right? Yes. About Chinggis Khan. Wow, it's just, it's so big. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> it's a very, very cool statue. Amazing. Alrighty guys, so I forgot to end the video again. So this is going to be the end of our adventure into the countryside. For me, this 
was the highlight of the trip so far, and I hope you guys enjoyed. This was just the tiniest taste of what the Mongolian countryside has to offer, and I'll definitely be back again soon to go way further out, maybe with some horses or some camels. Who knows, the possibilities are endless. Anyway, I am in a rush right now because I'm about to start on my next video, which is the main reason that I came to Mongolia, the Nadam Festival. I'm headed there right now. It's gonna be the next video coming right up, so stay tuned. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.